just get right to it, shall we? He's a friend of the show and has been for quite some time, and we appreciate him joining us this morning. His name is John Craman, and you probably know, see, hear his voice all the time at any Meekum auction, because he's the guy up there at the front, always doing the commentary about the cars. And I don't know, is it just that brain of yours that works so well that, that you can remember all of these cars that run? It's got to be. Look at it. Is, are, can he even hear us? John, can you hear us? Good morning. Good morning. Well, good uh, good morning to you. I don't know why I can't hear him, Mike. He's coming in through. Uh... He's coming in through what? Hold on, John. Mister Mars over there uh, handles this part of it, and uh, uh, a little technical the, difficulty. The technical thing that uh, Mister Mars has got going on. He doesn't even know. Well, he's working on it. He's working on it. But at any rate, uh, him up. huh? We just disconnected him. Oh, we did? Yeah. yeah. We're, okay. we're getting him back. They're, they're, they're not using our system. Using I can't hear you because you don't have your headset on. <laughs> He's not. They're not using the same system we use. I they're, see. They've okay. changed theirs. So um, while we while we while we wait for this, I, and I had such a wonderful lead in. Well, we go ahead. He's, He's here. Yeah. He's here. I know, but I we can't. But nobody can hear him up here. Well, let's see if we got it fixed. No, no. no. We're listening to you from. Uh, from some computer somewhere, but it, uh, I can't on, hear you. Um, at any rate, I am going to start this thing off. Uh, nearly 120 highly respected and sought after American classics from the Horton Classic Car Museum wow. in Nakona, Texas. Now, you're familiar with that name. They make boots out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to be offered at no reserve as part of the estimated 1,000 total vehicles to be offered at auction at Meekum Houston 2023. And and one of them is a 63 split window Z06 uh, from the Horton Museum. I mean, you're talking about some rare cars, uber rare cars that are going to go through the auction. Yeah, I can't even imagine. Um, I, I, I didn't even know that they had a 63 split window Z06. That was where the Z06 originated, mm-hmm. was in 63. And you know, it's funny because those, those names, like Z06, those originally were just factory identifications. RPO codes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For the, for the car that came down the assembly line. Nobody ever thought of actually using those to tell you about the car. Mm-hmm. Now it's pretty commonplace, at mm-hmm. least with General Motors and Chevrolet particularly. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Very much so. It's like uh, Copo. Copo. Yeah. Central office. Production. Order. Right. <laughs> There's that. And, you know, another one from Horton is a uh, 53 Chevy Corvette. Wow. You know, they've got they, Horton's, Blue flame? Horton's putting, yeah, Horton's putting some big irons in. Nakona, Texas. What a, what, a, what a place to have a car museum and a classic car museum. Well, it's, I, I get it because you want to be, you don't want to be in the hustle and bustle of the city. You want to be in your own environment where you. Do you know where speak. Nakona, Texas is? Uh, vaguely. I have no idea. It's over there. <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, it is. So at, at any rate, so Meekum Auction coming to town uh, April 13th through the 15th. Mm-hmm. That would be next weekend. Next weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 13th through the 15th. That would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the 15th, we're doing the uh, tailpipes, tailpipes and tacos. And ta- mm-hmm. We'll be at tailpipes and tacos that day. And well, I'll tell you, I wish I knew half of what uh, uh, John has forgotten. Yeah. Because I, I watch the show, you know, because I'm kind of a car nut myself. I'm always looking to learn uh, more and more about, especially the collector car piece. And I just watch the show just to learn listening to John talk mm-hmm. about all the various cars coming and the little nuggets of information he can provide um, that um, I, I go, wow, I, I, I never knew that. So I don't know how much studying he does about each car before it comes across the auction block. But, um, you know, he's always he's always a wealth of knowledge. Well, I think, you know, part of what he does is like we do. You got to do the research. Right. You have to learn about it as you do the walkthroughs and, and the cars. But he can't, he's not reading my chat to tell me it's time to talk to him. Oh, well, John, he, uh, he can hear us. John, can you hear? Can let, let, Let's try you now. Try Talk to us. I know you do, but we don't have you. And Mr. Mars, 
was looking for a, a chat. But uh, at any rate, I have him potted up all the wow. what? I've got you guys loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> something on my end. Well, no, I don't know what it is. Uh, it because you're not using Zoom and it's all jacked up. Checking and testing one, two. Oh yeah. Three. So the way that we're doing this and the way that we're able to hear you is we've taken Conrad's headset microphone off and are playing it on Mike Mars's computer. Speaker. Speaker. So uh, we can hear you. We can. Yeah. Well, we can oh, kind of hear okay. you. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. All yeah. Right. No. Well, I mean, we can hear you. All right. Well, I can hear all of you guys loud and clear. Well, that's good. And uh, so, and- so John, I have a question. Do you do you study about each car that's coming up? Do you just kind of read the the uh, what I call the rap sheet on the car that you guys post online, um, or is all that just in your head <laughs> over over time? Yeah, there's just there's no way to study, and we do you know thirty five, forty thousand cars a year, and there just is no way that you know either you know it or you don't. And yeah, I mean I do use the uh, customer supplied and the Mecham approved uh, description of the car, the bullet points of the car. But as far as tying in it, making it conversational with the other announcers, and then also adding historical tidbits and little stories and tales and background. That's all just from knowledge. Now, keep in mind, I've been doing this for 16 years, and I was a car guy my whole life before that. I was this geeky car guy that absorbed all this information. So I just sit back uh, and talk cars. I don't study. I don't read any notes. I don't have a computer. I don't have any. We don't have a teleprompter. None of that. Nobody's telling me what to say. I just huh. do it. Wow. Well, yeah. Is there a way that I could tap into that brain of yours? Because Watch obviously, obviously, it's oversized because I can't keep up. You're, you, we depend on you to tell all these stories. Well, and that's why I think I've been selected, uh, you know, to go on the show. Obviously, I feel like I'm representing all the car guys out there, uh, all the all the different genres. I want to make sure that the information is accurate. And I want to make sure that the information is relevant. Part of my role, too, is to keep my ears on what the other guys are saying. And if they're heading off into a direction that doesn't fit that criteria, I gently kind of come in and reel them back in. Um, What is your background? How How did you get so knowledgeable about cars? Well, I grew up in L.A. My dad sold cars. Uh, I was obsessed with cars since I was, you know, literally a toddler. And I really used to enjoy spending time at the car dealerships as a kid. Um, a huge brochure nut, uh, love of paper brochure, and I was just able to absorb all that information. I was helping my dad when I was in grade school. I was helping my dad talk to customers about the cars and helping them select trims and colors and engine options and gear ratios and all of that stuff. It just always came very naturally, and I've been able to retain a lot of that information over the years. And uh, so, you know, and I grew up at the right time, classic baby boomer, you know, growing up in the 60s uh, when the cars, you know, were starting to really sort of take off as a lifestyle item. And I'm just really lucky, you know, all these years later, my passion and my love, my enthusiasm for cars, I'm able to share that with our viewers. That's, you know, it's really important to me that, uh, you know, I don't want to come across the only guy that knows a few things about cars, but I am the guy that's been chosen by, uh, you know, by Mecham to not only represent the brand Beacom Auctions, I'm a full-time Beacom employee, part of the management team, unrelated to television, but, you know, just as importantly that when we get on air that we can continue to have credibility and and have the respect of all the other experts out there that are specialists in their fields, the different club members and stuff. You know, I get invited to speak at many of the major club and national conventions, and, you know, it's really gratifying for me because obviously they feel that what I have to say uh, and my opinions and my credibility as a car guy is strong enough that I'm, you know, I'm not just this guy on TV blabbing away about cars. I eat, live, and breathe the entire lifestyle. And you also get invited on the In Wheel Time Car Talk there Show at go. least <laughs> once a year. Yeah, and absolutely, and that is always that is always a thrill and a pleasure. Uh, well, thank you very much. Let's let's focus it for a few minutes about this uh, this. Uh, Horton Classic Car Museum and the 100 classics that you guys are going to auction off at no reserve. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I was lucky to go out uh, a couple of months ago and do some promotional work for 
that collection. It could very well, well be one of the best collections Meekum has ever had. There's 120 cars, about 40 Corvettes, but it really, it really says pre-war classics, a lot of 50s and 60s luxury car, cars, you know, Cadillacs and uh, Ford Thunderbirds, Pontiac Grand Prix, Imperials. Uh, there's muscle cars, and it just, it's a great group. And, you know, unfortunately, the owner of the museum passed away. His family's made a difficult decision to sell the cars. And it could very well put Houston, this Houston auction this year, uh, as an all time number one uh, uh, in total take for Mecham uh, at, at our Houston auction, which uh, is about 35 million, is our record. And this one group of cars alone could do eight to ten million dollars wow. everything is selling at no reserve the cars are great and uh, anybody wants any data on the cars or learn more about it meekum.com has got uh, the video that i did in addition to all the cars and all the descriptions and all the photos it's uh it's really you know it's sad that uh, you know mr horton has passed but also it was his vision that would that allowed him to collect and preserve these great cars and now they're going to get a chance to go to new collections and these are literally museum quality cars Right. Yeah, yeah. It, absolutely. And, uh, you know, like I said, I had a chance to be up there, sleepy little, uh, you know, classic, uh, you know, Texas town, about an yep. hour and a half or so <clears throat> northwest of Dallas. But, of course, coming to the Houston auction and, uh, you know, the folks in the area are a little sad to see it going away. It's kind of a landmark for the area. A lot of car clubs make cruises and stuff up to that destination. But, you know, as we know, it's uh you know, things change. And the fact that these cars have been preserved in such good shape, you know, they'll get scattered to museums and collectors all across the country. Are there so, one or two of the uh, cars that are in the collection that drew your attention, that you're really focused on, that you'd like to have in your collection or that do you think is going to bring big money? Yeah, there's a couple actually that really sort of stick out. Uh, I'm going to cite just a couple of quick examples. What I like to call the ultimate Corvette bookends are there. Uh, of course, Corvettes, as we know, started in 1953 and gone all the way now into eight generations, C8. 2023 70th anniversary edition is out right now. And sitting side by side when I walked in the museum door was a 53 white sitting next to a 70th anniversary brand new 2023 Corvette C8, also in white, sitting there side by side. It just literally sent chills up me just to just to just to relish in the history incredible history of America's sports cars but then a specific car there's a uh, uh, there's a boss 429 Mustang one of my favorite cars of all time a 69 one of only two years built uh, with that big semi hemi boss 429 engine made for NASCAR racing and put into the Mustang only to make it legal to race never intended to be a high performance street engine although it is and uh, so that's on the other spectrum the pony car and the Corvette spectrum very well represented but all the cars I mean literally all 120 cars of the Horton collection are all worthy of mention. They're all fantastic cars, and uh, they're going to add a lot of excitement to already what's an exciting event. I'm well, I, an auction. We always look forward to it. When we were trying to get you on the air there, Conrad mentioned the 63 split window Z06 coupe, uh, I, and one of only 199 ever produced. Uh, matching numbers, uh, uh, Fuel injected, 327, 360 horsepower. I mean, you can't, for me, you can't get any more classic than that. That's that. That's my go-to right there. Yeah, well, well said. Four 63 split-window Corvettes in the collection. But, I mean, the crown jewel is the Holy Grail Z06. Uh, again, another car like the Boss 429 Mustang I mentioned. Another car that was intended to make the, the ultra-high performance equipment on that car legal for in that particular time road racing and uh yeah it's just incredible as you said you know under 200 of those cars were built uh, making them rare and putting them at the top of the pinnacle we know the legacy and the reputation of the name z06 in corvette world it's like z28 in the camaro world and it all began in 1963 that was the first year for that unassuming option code which i mean z06 was a random option code uh like any option code was but all these years later it means a serious performer and uh that'll be our top selling 63 split window of the four that's for sure now are you guys still accepting uh, consignments you know it's funny we don't ever shut down the consignment stream we will be consigning cars literally the day uh that they would be auctioned off uh, our final day will be uh, Saturday, April 15th, but there'll be people that'll show up in the morning and say, hey, I've got a car I want to sell today. And they'll get put, they'll get put in, we can enter them, they'll get put in at the end of the sale, 
uh, of course, uh, in sequential lot number order. Uh, so, you know, from that standpoint, we're always accepting consignments. People can sign up as a bidder right on site. We recommend in advance, but it's only about a five minute process to sign up as a bidder. If they decide, you know, they get there, they're spectators, they see a car that they want, they want to bid, not a, not a difficult process at all. And I just want to say, we really, we really encourage folks to come on out. If you're not a buyer or seller, no problem. Come on out. Tickets, Spectator. 20 bucks in advance. Yep. 30 bucks at the door, kids 12 and under free. It's a fantastic car show. Over a thousand great cars at uh, Energy Center. It is It is a truly a great car show just to go and look and see, even if you're not going to bid on the car. What does it cost to, to bid on a car? Uh, to sign up as a bidder, it's a $200 registration, and that includes uh, the actual bidder and one guest to be able to have access for all three days of the auction and i just want to do a little short plug for our television coverage we are going to be uh going live a total of 12 hours six hours each day the friday and saturday on motor trend tv and motor trend plus so for folks that can't make it out to the auction we always recommend coming out but if you can't tune in and that will coverage will begin at noon central time each of those two days well, once again motor trend tv motor trend plus yeah and uh, one nice thing about going is there you can actually poke your head into the window, look inside the interior. You can get down. And I've, I've done this myself. You get down on hands and knees and look underneath the car and see what's going on under there. Is it as pretty underneath as it is on top? I mean, all of the intricate things that you just can't do on television coverage, uh, but you can if you go in person. I mean, I, I spend hours right. there when I go. Yeah, always better in person, and I will just tell people bring comfortable shoes and plan on spending a lot more time than you might think because there are so many great cars. It will be, you know, for a lot of people, it's literally a trip back in time. It's an escape, escape to a different world, a different time. You're going to see cars you're familiar with from the past, and you're also going to be able to get a chance to get up close with cars maybe that you've heard about or never heard about that are going to get introduced to perhaps for the first time. So bring your friends, bring your family members, come on out. We really encourage and, you know, we we love to have folks come out and enjoy the auction environment. It's not just about buyers and sellers. Yeah. John, is there any one car in all of the years that you've been doing this that stands out in your mind? And I know that you've done thousands and thousands of cars and you've sent them all across the auction block. But is there any one in particular over the years that stands out with you? Well, I have to say that, you know, we've done so many great cars, including, of course, the Bullet Mustang, the famed Hero Hata Merc, the world's most famous custom. But the number one most exciting segment uh, goes back over 10 years ago. I was at Monterey, California. Uh, 1965 Shelby Daytona Cobra, one of only five built. The actual car that won the Manufacturer's Championship for Ford, first time an American manufacturer ever did that. Uh, it sold for seven Point two five million dollars. Bob Bondurant was the driver, by the way, back in 1965 at Le Mans. He drove the car up onto the auction block. Oh, I mean, how does, awesome not, is that? does not get any better than that. That probably will forever be uh, at the top of my favorites list. There's a lot, but that's that's going to be a tough one to beat. Well, John, it's always great to talk to you. Good to see you again, and hopefully uh, we'll be out there and have a chance to say hello. And uh, it, we really appreciate you taking the time out of a Saturday uh, to join us. And uh, next weekend, NRG Center, uh, April 13th through the 15th, the Meekum Houston Collector Car Auction. We really appreciate it, John. Good to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure hanging with my car buddies. All right, brother. Thanks, John. T take care. That worked out uh, well.